Welcome to another episode of the News Roundup. Today we'll be talking about the Pfizer mRNA-based COVID-19 vaccine and the durability problems that are continuing with the fourth dose, as a recent large Israeli population-wide study is showing. And so, from Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and our episode is starting right now. Israeli researchers tracking COVID-19 vaccination investigated the benefits of a fourth dose of the BNT162b2 Pfizer's BioNTech mRNA vaccine in an effort to reduce the strains on the Israeli healthcare system brought on by the Omicron strain of COVID-19. The fourth booster dose was authored for persons aged 60 and above, as well as high-risk populations and healthcare workers if over four months had passed since receiving a third booster dose. The Israeli Institute of Technology sought to better understand the effectiveness of the fourth booster dose as compared to only three doses against confirmed infection as well as severe illness in a targeted study population of Israel-based elderly individuals. What they found was that the durability of the BNT162b2 vaccine product remains a problem given the effectiveness wanes rapidly starting at week 5 after administration. While the protection against severe disease held, the study team only evaluated the product for 6 weeks, which is problematic and presents a serious limitation. The authors acknowledge a modest benefit to a fourth dose while not delving into other considerations such as safety. According to the New England Journal of Medicine, or the NEJM, this observational population study period ran from January 10th to March 2nd of 2022 for confirmed infections and in, in February 18th of 2022 for severe illness. This study followed the design of a previous study led by this team when they assessed the protection of the third booster dose as compared to a second dose. The study also included persons who were 60 years of age and older who had not been infected with Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2 before the study period, were eligible for the fourth dose of the BNT162b2 vaccine by the end of the study period, had available data regarding sex and demographic group, had not stayed abroad for the entire study period, and had not received a coronavirus disease 2019 vaccine other than the BNT162b2 before the study period. So now let's discuss the findings. The Israeli researchers included 1.2 million Israeli residents that met the study inclusion criteria thanks to access to the National Health Database. They reported that when comparing with the three-dose group, the aggregated four-dose groups, and the internal control group included more person days over the age of 80 years and more person days from the general Israeli population. They reported that the three-dose group has a larger number of risk days as compared to the data observed in the aggregated four-dose groups. However, they also had more confirmation infections and a greater number of severe cases. Unfortunately, though, the same durability challenges are observed with BNT162b2 in this study. For example, the study team discovered that from the fifth week, 29 to 35 days and onward, the rate ratio for confirmed infections started to decline. As described in the New England Journal of Medicine article, the rate ratios reveal better results for protection against more severe COVID-19. At week 4 after the vaccine administration, the authors report the adjusted rate of severe illness was lowered by a factor of 3.5 when compared to those in the three-dose group, as well as lower by a factor of 2.3 when compared to the internal control group. The authors summarized that the adjusted rate of severe COVID-19 after rounding in the fourth week after the fourth dose was 1.6 cases per 100,000 person days, as compared with 5.5 cases per 100,000 person days in the three-dose group and 3.6 cases per 100,000 person days in the internal control group. The authors of the study declared that the performance of the vaccine in the context of protection against severe disease appeared stable in later weeks with no signs of waning by the sixth week after receipt of the fourth dose. Note, however, that the study couldn't track to week 8 due to the 14-day follow-up period for severe COVID-19. This outcome finding was two weeks shorter than for confirmed infection, thus limiting the evaluation of the adjusted rate ratio 
for severe illness at week 6. So how then are the Israeli investigators interpreting these results? Well, the takeaway of the study team was that BNT162B2 offers the elderly or others at risk, quote, short-term protection against confirmed infection in severe illness caused by the Omicron variant. But when addressing the durability issues, meaning the effectiveness of the vaccine over time, the author's interpretation of the data based on the study said that the protection is definitely short-term. As they report against Omicron, it, quote, reaches a maximum in the fourth week after vaccination after the rate ratio decreases to approximately 1.1 by the eighth week. So then, do the Israeli researchers acknowledge that the BNT162B2 COVID-19 vaccine protection wanes quickly? The answer, of course, is yes. The authors reported that these findings suggest that protection against confirmed infection wanes quickly. Now, when dealing with protection against severe infection, as I mentioned earlier in this show, the authors observed a persistence of protection, but only to week six. Now, this is hardly enough time to make any definitive claims about this product. And if other data continues to hold, protection against severe infection will wane shortly after week six. After all, that is why there was a need for the fourth booster dose in the first place. Regardless of the duration of the study, though, the protection was held. Yet they acknowledge further study for longer periods of time is needed. And yes, the study authors admit that there is limitations to their study. They attempted to address biases, but this could still be a factor. Bias could be a factor in both assessing protection against confirmed infection, an example, the ability to completely control for behavioral differences of persons who received a fourth dose, and against severe infection, meaning differences in the prevalence of coexisting conditions. And because such data isn't documented in the ministry's database, the authors were not able to control for them. Other factors involving bias can be reviewed in the New England Journal of Medicine. The next question is then, what were the results of additional sensitivity analysis? Well, the authors sought to verify the robustness of the results on additional basis by performing analysis of the general Israeli population and area of residence level risk factors incorporated in the overall model, leading to the conclusion that, quote, the results of these analysis were similar to the results of the main analysis. And when it comes to the author's point of view regarding the effectiveness of the fourth dose, well, they said that based on the study results, they write that there is, quote, evidence for the effectiveness of a fourth vaccine dose against severe illness caused by the Omicron variant as compared with a third dose administered more than four months earlier. Yet, they point out for protection against confirmed infection, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine product, quote, appeared to provide only short-term protection and a modest absolute benefit. Meanwhile, here in the US, Peter Marks of the US Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, is on the record saying that, at least in American society, there cannot be continuous boosting of the population indefinitely. He said in an interview that, quote, I think we are very much on board with the idea that we simply can't be boosting people as frequently as we are. And I am the first to acknowledge that an additional fourth booster dose that was authorized was a stopgap measure until we got things in place for the next potential next booster, given the emerging data researching advanced vaccines, mucosal vaccines, and pan-coronavirus vaccines. But we are not going to get there for this coming year, and so this is really trying to do the best that we can with the knowledge we have at hand, which is something that we had to do a fair amount of over the past two years. Now, it's also worth noting that there also have been no long-term studies of these vaccine products with the originally targeted two doses, let alone four doses in less than 24 months, and concerning safety signals are higher than authorities are unfortunately willing to accept at this point. In fact, recently, an Italian regional court declared that the vaccine mandate in that country is questionable, given the court's review of safety signals in the European database called Eudra Vigilance, which was of concern. They requested that the Italy Constitutional Court review the case. Now, back in Israel, the Israeli team involved in this study is clear that the boost is of modest absolute benefit, and that the BNT162B2 product immediately begins waning by week five when protecting against confirmed infection. This means that many infections and community transmission will occur among those with four total doses. The logic underlining vaccine mandates involve true control of the pathogen. And, as we have chronicled here at Trial Site News, heavily vaccinated nation after heavily vaccinated nation are continuing to have real problems in this department. For example, we recently reported that in Australia, double the amount of people in Australia have died from COVID-19 
in the first three months of 2022 compared to all of 2020 and 2021, which honestly is shocking. And the fact that the great majority of media have failed to even cover the subject is telling. And of course, we'll be keeping you posted on this story as it continues to develop. And that, my friends, brings our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. From Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and I will see you all next time.